presence. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If I want God to move in my life or else I wouldn't be able to have a move in my house when I'm all alone and nobody's there and I don't have a preacher. But it's my worship and my praise and my prayer and my Amen. petitions that get the presence of God Amen. to move in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful to be in his presence tonight. I believe that God is about to do something extraordinary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not, not just beyond the ordinary, extraordinary tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we just give him a hand clap of praise tonight? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Cody, these, it's loud on the monitors for me. Hallelujah, I can hear myself speak perfectly fine. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles and you'd like to turn to me tonight, I'm going to be reading the book of John, the second chapter, the first verse tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know if you feel that, but I feel the presence of God here. Amen. Hallelujah. It was hard to sing, and it's going to be hard enough to preach. Amen. Because I, I, I was up there praying, I was praying for God, and I understood that I'm nothing more than an ordinary pastor. I'm nothing more than an ordinary man. Hallelujah. But I understand that we serve an extraordinary God. Hallelujah. We serve a God that He said that with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you stand reading God's word here tonight and show reverence to his word, St. John, the second chapter, the first verse tonight. I'm going to be reading 11 verses. Hallelujah. In this chapter, the second chapter of John. The Bible says on the third day, there is a marriage in Canaan of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. These third day things. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Amen. Hallelujah. And there were set there six water parts of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins of peace. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear it to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse... Then they said, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning, this beginning of the miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee and manifest or made himself or made himself known forth his glory and his disciples believed on him because he turned water into wine. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Sales, you pray that may this message the reading of God's word here tonight. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come hungry. We come expecting Lord God. Lord, we know that you can do abundantly Lord, above yes, all, Lord yes, God. Yes, Lord, as he Lord, speaks yes. the word, Lord God, and brings us and feeds us, Lord God, we ask that your anointing to be upon him and on every one of our ears and on our hearts, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Hallelujah. I believe that... Uh, it's amazing how God works. Let me just tell you really quick. Hallelujah. God gave me the scriptures and he gave me what I was supposed to preach, but not really, not really, really didn't know where he was going just, just to right about now. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Praise now I'm a little bit excited. Praise, Praise the Lord. God. Hallelujah. I know why he did that because it would be hard for me to contain myself. Amen. He double Sunday. Otherwise, amen. Praise the life of the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible tells us of a story of a, of a, of a, of a wedding in Canaan. And the Bible says that Jesus and his disciples were there. Everybody was having a good time. Everybody's having a party. Things are going good. This is supposed to be a joyous occasion. But what took place was is somebody forgot to order enough wine. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And back in their tradition and back in their culture, when you ran out of wine, the party stopped. Right. 
Amen. Hallelujah. The joyous time was over when, when the servants walk back to the place where the wine is being stored and they, they come back and they find nothing. There's nothing there. We're out. We didn't order enough. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't have enough here to keep the party going, to keep this joyous occasion going. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus is at a marriage. Everybody say a marriage. Amen. Amen. Where, where a man and a woman are about to join in, in holy matrimony and there are things that are supposed to be a joyous occasion. And the one thing that you don't want to do, and a lot of, a lot of women don't understand this is you don't want bad things to happen at your wedding. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't want to be known as the, the, the lady who ran out of wine in her entire way, man. Hallelujah. You don't want to be known as the, the, as the, the wedding the groom's been passed out or the, amen, hallelujah, or as something called a fire. You don't want to be known as that. You want it to be perfect. You want everything to be exact. You want everybody to be happy. You don't want the in-laws fighting with the other family, amen. Hallelujah. You want everything to go according to plan. Yes, amen. And what we find is Jesus is just a guest at this wedding. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He is not the main speaker. He is not marrying the man and the wife. He is a guest at the wedding. And the Bible says that Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes and pulls him out of the background. After the Holy Ghost. And it says, Jesus, they're out of wine. And Jesus' response was, it is nothing to us. Why are you worrying yourself with this? Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God. And Jesus commands the, the servants. He says, I want you to go and take the water pots. Now, the water pots were seven things that they would set at the door and the Jewish people would come and wash their hands with these water pots. They're ordinary. Amen. Hallelujah. There was nothing special about the stone of water pots. Hallelujah. They were, you've seen them throughout every Jewish house. You would walk in to eat a meal. There was water that was set in a basin and water that was set in a stone. Hallelujah. Stone pot. And you would use that water to wash your hands before you ate. Amen. You would use that water. Amen. After you had eaten to wash your hands. That was what it was for. And Jesus chooses the most ordinary vessel in the entire house. Right. My God, he does not get the gold-plated vessel. He does not get the vessel that they are already serving wine out of. He commands them to go get the most ordinary vessel that they can find in the house. Oh, he tells them, I want you to take the most ordinary thing that you have ever found that no, nobody even thinks about looking at the stone pots when they walk by. Nobody even thinks about even giving, giving a second thought about the stone pots. But Jesus tells the servants, go take the most ordinary thing you can and I'm about to do something extraordinary with it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And a lot of times, people don't understand that God will take the ordinary things in your life and do something extraordinary with it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We constantly trip ourselves up on things when nobody, nobody even took a second thought about it, Brother Stewart. It was nothing more than a stone water pot. The most ordinary thing in the house. And Jesus turns to the servants and says, go get the most ordinary thing you can find and fill it with water. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Sometimes God's commands are ordinary. Oh, Jesus. Yes. We believe that, amen, hallelujah. We don't understand that if we would just do the things that we are capable of, if we would just show up, amen, if we would just worship, if we would just lift our hands up and worship God, that's water. If we would just bring the water, my God, through the Holy Ghost, if we would just go to the river and get the water, just like the servants did, and God, I'm here, and I haven't seen anything say extraordinary yet, but I can do the ordinary. Lord, I can get beside myself. Lord, I can preach. I can run. I can holler. I can I can't do the ordinary, God, so that you can do the extraordinary. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes in the first processes of miracles, you have to mess with water. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. There are miracles that take place in your life that sometimes you're not going to feel it right off the bat, folks. You're not going to be dealing with water right off the bat. But if you go and follow the command that Jesus has given you, saying if you, the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. He said, I just need somebody. I just need an ordinary vessel. Go get me an ordinary vessel. That's all I want. I don't want anybody special. I don't want anybody that has great talent. I don't want, come on. I don't want anybody that's in the, in the forefront. Just get me somebody ordinary. 
ordinary. If I can just find somebody ordinary. If I can just find a vessel that is ordinary enough, I will do extraordinary things with it. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 My God. Hallelujah. We read in the Old Testament that when David is anointed king, that it wasn't the strongest. It wasn't the oldest. It wasn't the most good looking one. In fact, nobody even thought to call David. He wasn't even considered one of the elite sons. The Bible says that none of them were anointed. And Samuel, Samuel would not sit down to eat until they called the one that nobody thought to call. Amen. Hallelujah. God has, to, God has a history of using ordinary things to do extraordinary things. Yes, amen. yes, amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. My God, hallelujah. He takes Moses, who is nothing more than a murderer. He is yep. wanted by the Egyptian government, amen. He stutters. There is nothing good or eloquent about his speech, according to Moses himself. But he takes a man named Moses, nothing yes. more than a shepherd. Oh, takes him and tells him to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Hallelujah. And we are sitting here and we, we we're in the story of Moses and we think Moses was some eloquent speaker. No, the Bible. Bible says that he had to get Aaron to speak for him. Moses didn't, wasn't able to talk very good. When he talked, he began to throw like this and he couldn't talk very nice. The Bible even says that Moses tells God, I am not an eloquent speaker. God took something that was ordinary and did extraordinary things with it. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus. Hallelujah. We sing a song that says faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. Hallelujah. Not for the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful. I'm so happy tonight that we have finally. Hallelujah. I got, I got, I, I got tired of messing with ministers that were with too much pride in their life. They, yeah. It would make, have so much pride in their life. It would make me sick. I couldn't even. Yeah. My God. Hallelujah. I can't stomach people who all they have is pride. I like ministers that say, I will do whatever you want me to do. I like ministers that say, hey, I'm just here. I'm just here. Hallelujah. I don't care how many times I preach. I don't care how many times I sing. I'm just going to worship God. That's all I want to do. Because then that lets me know they understand the part that I'm nothing more than an ordinary man. But when God gets a hold of me, when God begins to move, there are extraordinary things that take place. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We don't understand that Peter was nothing more than a coward. Amen. Uh, yeah. We don't want to go and say that uh, because we want to go. He's the one that found it. He's the one that preached the first message. Uh, but Peter was a coward. Uh, hallelujah. He had, a, he had some pride issues. Uh, remember, he's the one that comes up and Jesus tells him that this now you're all going to forsake me. Peter steps to the forefront. Uh, hallelujah. I think that's why Jesus liked him so much uh, because he always was stepping to the forefront. He had the ability to open his mouth even when he didn't know what he was talking about. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He stepped to the forefront and tells Jesus, Jesus, I will even go to death with you, Lord. Lord, no, I will go to prison with you, Lord. I will go all the way. I will, Lord, I'll follow you all the way. And the Bible says that Jesus looks at him and he tells him, before the cock will crow, you will deny me thrice. Right. Right. How does God take a man who's a coward and has a little bit of pride issues and he's preaching the gospel? Right. Praise the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh my God, we don't want to wrap our mind around that. We have these heroes of faith. And the only reason why they're heroes of faith is not because that they were this outstanding person. They were an ordinary person that was just willing to let God move in their life. Up for the Holy Ghost tonight, there was nothing extraordinary about Abraham. Come on, come on, somebody else. In fact, if anything, he was considered the, come on, him and his wife were considered the lowest part of their society because Sarah hadn't had no children yet. Come on now. He got somebody else. Any part of any society back Back in those days, if you didn't have kids, they considered you ordinary. You're not extraordinary because you haven't contributed just yet. God, my God. God takes a man named Abram, who is nothing more than ordinary, and his wife Sarah, who hadn't had no children yet, and he tells them things like, I'm going to make your sand, I'm going to make your seed as the sand of the seashore. I'm going to make your seed as the stars of the heaven. He takes somebody ordinary, and just because Abraham got up with everything that he had, oh my God, he loves somebody else. gets everything that he has, and and he begins to march to a city whose, fellow, whose builder and maker is God. He, he acted in faith. Mighty God. But he was ordered. Mighty God. Mighty God. There's Mighty nothing God. special about Abram. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Come on. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The reason why he becomes the father of the faithful is because of his faithful actions. Yes. yes. Come on. Hallelujah. The reason why Moses becomes one of the greatest leaders that Israel ever seen was not because he was qualified to do it. Come on. But because he listened when God spoke. Yes. 
Hallelujah. When God said to do crazy things like throw your rod down. Oh, come on now. I lost that little. He would throw his rod down and it become a sissing snake. When God said to do crazy things like pick it up by its tail, he would pick it up by its tail. I lost that little. He listened to the voice of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We, we, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be just doing the ordinary things. Hallelujah. I, I, come on. There's plenty of churches in Sweetwater, Texas that do ordinary things. I don't want to do ordinary Amen. things. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to be able to make claims. And I, I know I can make claims. I tell them, somebody that God can heal anything. If you just want to come to church. I was telling a young man just the other day. He goes through the church. I said, yeah. He goes, he told, he's telling me how great it was. Yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. And I was happy for him that he changed his life around uh, and he comes to me and he says well what happens in your church <laughs> come on amen hallelujah amen. I wasn't trying to be boastful. I wasn't trying to be prideful. I said, a better question would be, what doesn't happen? When I've seen the lame walk. I've seen the blind eyes open. I've seen ribs replaced. I've seen broken bones healed. I've seen drug addicts delivered. I've seen all these things that have taken place at that PCJC off of the Holy Ghost. And he kind of looked at me kind of strange and kind of funny. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Kind of goes up. And I just look. I said, well. And I realized that the conversation got to a faith basis. Right. Come on. That I was talking about things of faith, and he wasn't just, he wasn't quite there yet. Come on. The Lord, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight, I do not want to leave anybody behind because these things are going to take faith to believe them. Hallelujah. Amen. God takes ordinary things and does extraordinary things with them. We have ordinary people, but we have an extraordinary God. Yeah. There is nothing special about how I preach and about my knowledge of the Word of God. There is nothing special about that, but it's about the extraordinary God that I serve. I just made room for Him. I say, God, I really don't know how you're going with this service. I really don't know where you're going, but God, if you would just give me one scripture, one scripture, God, I can. you can do the rest, God. I'll open my mouth like usual, God. I'll get up there and act like a full God, like usual, God, but you're going to have to be extraordinary. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We better go on. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 For the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes when I listen to myself preach, I'm on. I'm on there once or twice. It's very hard for me to do. I don't like how I say hallelujah over and over again. I can't stop doing that when the anointing power of God is here. Amen. Oh, for the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us about Peter and how he denied Christ before the crowd. He denied him three times. And the Bible says he went away and he went bitterly when Jesus finds him again. He is not at the tomb with the women. Oh, for the Holy Ghost tonight. He is not the first one out the tomb. Can I, can I get an amen? Hallelujah. In fact, he may have been the third, the fourth one at the tomb. And when Jesus comes to him in his resurrected body, even though Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, come back and say, hey, he's not there. He has risen. Peter goes fishing. Amen. My God. Praise the Lord. Why are you going fishing, Peter? Come on. Think about that. Jesus has just resurrected from the dead. Right. Just like he told his disciples and all his best top three guys that he chose went back to what they did before. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on. Peter went fishing. James and John said, we're going too. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter, you're not getting it. Mary and Martha just came and told Mary and Mary, the, the Mary and Salmon A just come and told you that Jesus has been resurrected from the dead. The Bible says the disciples ran to the tomb and the Paul, they seen that the, the tomb was empty. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. See, all yes, God, yeah. yes, God, yes, that the tomb was empty and the coals were laying there. And then the Bible says they didn't stick around, that they ran back to where they ran, come perplexed. And the Bible tells us that the words to them seem like idle tales or seem like fairy tales to them. Even though Jesus told them that he was going to die, he was going to be buried and he was going to be resurrected again the third day. The only people that show up very early in the morning are a couple of women. The great disciple Peter doesn't show up to the tomb. Mary, he's hiding somewhere. Right. Come on. John the beloved is not at the tomb. He's hiding with the other disciples. Right. Right. Come on. Think about that for just a moment. We never thought of that, did we? We just thought, oh, Peter was such a mighty apostle. Come on. Oh, he's hiding. 
He don't know what to do. He hears these rumors and then there were two men who walk into the road to Emmaus and they're talking about how that Jesus visited them. Peter don't know what. I'm just going to go fishing. I don't know what else to do. Come on. I'm just going to go fishing. The Bible says while he's fishing, <laughs> oh, for the Holy Ghost, yeah. that Jesus is standing on the shore and asked him, have you caught anything? Oh, for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is standing on the shore saying, guys, have you caught? Oh, Master, we have told all night. They didn't know who Jesus was. The Bible tells us that they didn't figure out who this was till afterwards. That they said, oh, we've told all night. And Jesus commands him, cast your net on the right side of the boat. Oh, for the Holy yeah. Ghost. You know, yeah. Yeah. This was not because Peter needed money. It was to teach Peter a lesson. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. The Bible says that they cast the net on the right side of the boat and they pull in a drink, a, a great draught of fishes. So much the net begin to break. They get it to shore. Jesus already has food prepared for them before. My God, after the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He didn't need the fishes for food. He already had the food prepared for him. Yeah. Yes, amen. Come on. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus came. Then they realize, hey, this is Jesus. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. When they get closer to Peter, the Bible says Peter's neck and he has to put his coat on because it's Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He went back to what he always had done. He reverted back to who he was after the Holy Ghost. So he Jesus shows up. He has food prepared for them on the table. Already, Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people coming down. How many times have we heard that song? Amen. Hallelujah. He already, how he already had the food prepared. Peter's out fishing. Come on. The Bible says that he jumps into the lake or jumps into the water because he was naked. Right? He didn't want to see. He didn't want Jesus to see him the way he was. So he was ashamed. The Bible says that once that Peter finally gets to the shore, come on, amen, hallelujah. The Bible tells us that James and John are excited to see Jesus. So they go to the shore, but Peter's not so excited. Uh, all right. Hallelujah. Because everybody was looking at Peter. What are we going to do? Well, we're just going to go fish, folks. We're going to go back to what we know. Come on. Amen. amen. That is what you should have done, Peter. That is the only thing that you should have done. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All you had to do was wait for Jesus to show up. The Bible then tells us that the raptors, this is in the book of John, if you want to read the very last chapter of the book of John, if you want to go home and read it for yourself. But the Bible tells us that once they get back to the shore, that Jesus asked Peter a question. Peter, do you love me more than this? Yeah. Right. Amen, amen, amen. Come on. He asked Peter a question. You see all these fish that you drew in, Peter? You see your past experience of being, do you love me more than these? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Peter's response was, is Lord, I'm fond of you. And Jesus' response was, Peter, does the love for you consume you? Right. Hallelujah. Can I venture to say that Peter, Peter barely made it to the day of Pentecost? <laughs> My God, hallelujah. Oh, my God, hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you, I'm still preaching on ordinary people, but an extraordinary God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Peter barely made it to the day of Pentecost, folks. The Bible says that his response was, Jesus, I'm fond of you. Jesus' response was, Peter, does your love for me consume you? You're going to have a consuming love after the Holy Ghost now. Hallelujah. Yes. Peter, then Jesus asked him the exact same question. Peter, do you love me more than these? And he said, yes, Lord. But Jesus said, Peter, do you, do you have a consuming love for me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know that I'm fond of you. You're my friend, Jesus, but really, I'm not consumed with it. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Then Jesus says again, feed my sheep. Then Jesus returns back to what Peter is saying, and he says, Peter, are you fond of me? If I can't get you to consume the love that you have for me, if I can't get that love to consume you, I'm going to use what you already have. Oh, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He used a fondness love, and he said, Peter, are you fond of me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I'm fond of you. Then he tells them, listen, boy, there's going to come a day where you're going to have to be crucified upside down. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But he said, when you are converted, strengthen your brother. Amen. Come on. Then Peter shows up to the day of Pentecost. And then we finally find he's finally doing his job. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. At the time that he needed, the disciples needed him the most. And I'm not trying to do, downgrade Peter at all. He's a great apostle. In fact, some of us, when he had made it to the day of Pentecost. Amen. <laughs> he got a little son. Some of these early Christians. Hey, I haven't seen that happen yet. 
yet, so they'd walked out the first two hours and they'd been gone. Amen. The Bible says they went and they tarried at Jerusalem. They waited until something happened. Yes. You can't keep people's attention nowadays for more than 20 minutes because we don't want to wait for God to do anything. But the Bible says on the first day of Pentecost, they didn't have a PA system. They didn't have Psalms. They just stood there and they tarried until power fell. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Peter shows up on the day of Pentecost and acts the first chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Judas has been, Judas has already been, he already killed himself. Amen. Peter then chooses another one, another disciple. He they cast lots for another disciple. Matthias is chosen. Hallelujah. It gives us a, 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 a hallelujah a, a, a attendance of who is there. It says Peter is there. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there. Oh, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I could preach a message on that for an hour and a half, but I'm not going to do it. Hallelujah. Mary, the the mother of Jesus is there. The disciples are there. They choose the disciple named Matthias to take Judas's spot. Then we flip over to the second chapter of the book of Acts. And the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all of one accord and one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared of them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them the utterance of the yes. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, and every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language, and they all and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold or not, we all these which speak Galileans, and how we hear every man in our own tongue where we were born. Hallelujah. And you can read the name of the name of the ones that are there. I'm not going to read that. Hallelujah. But back down to the 12th verse. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking, these men are full of new wine. And guess who stands up? Come on. Hallelujah. Now there's something different about Peter. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He done been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. He's consumed with something now. Oh, He's yes. beside himself yes. now. Peter stands up. The Bible says, but Peter, if I say, but Peter, hallelujah, but Peter. standing up for the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto him, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose. See, it is but the third hour of the day, or nine o'clock, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And my God, I don't know if you've ever read the rest of this, but Peter preached. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I still can't read what he said without getting excited. Amen. And I've read it a thousand times. And I begin to read about what he said and how he said it. And how the, the one that they had threatened him. Oh my God. That the, their leader had just been crucified. And Peter's preaching like it's Sunday. And there's no threat of anybody killing him. Yeah, amen. Come on. Man. Jesus had just been crucified, and Peter with his big mouth is just telling people, you crucified Jesus. You're the my God for the Holy Ghost. He's pulling to the ones who, who were responsible for putting him on Calvary, and he's pulling them out in the crowd saying, you were the ones that crucified the Messiah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Come on. A lot of today's churchmen say, shh, you don't want to offend them. Come on. I don't know if you've ever read Peter's message, but it was quite offensive if you were somebody who was responsible for crucifying Jesus. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I tell you all that to tell you this tonight. The Bible then says that when they heard this in the 37th verse, I'm not going to read it all because, hallelujah, I want you to go home and read that. I want you to go home and read Peter's message and tell me if you don't get excited about what he was preaching. That man was anointed. He was consumed with something. There was something that changed. Why? Because God took an ordinary man and did extraordinary things with him. Oh, yes. Yes, amen. 
Hallelujah. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the 37th verse that when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? My God, and I don't know how Peter figured this out, but somehow he figured this out. And the 38th verse, Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ oh, for the remission of your God, sins God. and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm thinking, Jesus, you picked the right guy. You picked the right guy. He knew exactly what to say. He knew exactly what to preach. He knew exactly how to do it after the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort. Notice the Bible doesn't talk about the other 11 disciples. It just says Peter's doing all this. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Save yourself from the Suntor generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added to them about 3,000 souls. Praise God. Praise God. My God. Peter preached. Remember the guy who's denying Jesus? Remember the guy who's trying to revert back to who he was? He has an identity crisis. He projects himself bigger than what he really is. Come on. That guy is now preaching the gospel. Preaching one of the first and best messages that have ever been preached before. In Whoa, fact, I'm very to say God. that every preacher that will ever preach behind him will pick out of his messages to say that which is lost because he laid the foundation Jesus said, I give unto thee, Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. He said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And every other preacher after him is now taking from his message. Yes. Hallelujah. And 3,000 oh souls God, God, are saved. God, God. I don't know if you've ever read the Bible and figured this out, but if you skip down to the third verse and you talk about how Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the Bible never tells us the day ended. <laughs> Come on. 9 o'clock in the morning, Peter preaches a message and 3,000 souls are saved. He goes to the temple at the hour of prayer. Same day. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Sees a lame man sitting there from his mother womb and tells him, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give out to thee in the name of Jesus Christ. And that rise up and walk. He takes him by the hand. The lame man gets up leaping and praising God. And now the scribes and the Pharisees know that Jesus is alive and well. Because Peter, come on, you know, what's up there? Because Peter did something. He took a ordinary man. He just walked by an ordinary lame man and he allowed God to use him extraordinarily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. First thing that we do when God tells us something crazy to do, the first thing that we do is we say, God, not me, God. There's something, there's somebody called, you get a pastor here, and his name had nothing to do with you in the first place. And God says, come on, he got all something here. It has nothing to do with you in the first place. That's the first lesson we need to learn. He is always taking ordinary people. You don't have the ability to make the lame walk. You don't have the ability to make the blind see. You don't have the ability to replace lungs and replace broken bones. You don't have that ability, but God does. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Too long women over here. Arguing. Oh, God moves. And then we have those other people over there saying, Oh, God doesn't move. And then you have those other people. Oh, there's no such thing as God. And we're going back and forth. I just wish one time the church would get it. And they would figure out, Hey, if I can do some extraordinary things with God, hallelujah, somebody, I can shut up every critic. I come on now. Hallelujah. The Bible says that even though they got up and they were trying to denounce what had happened, that they could not denounce that this lame man who was lame was now walking. They were trying to denounce Jesus. They were trying to say, Quit. They even charged the disciples. Stop preaching in the name of Jesus. And Peter looks at him. My God, I like uh, I, I like reading the book of Acts. I like reading some of Peter's answers. And Peter re returns back to them and says, Remember the coward? Yeah. Remember that guy? They charged him. If you say one more thing about Jesus, we're going to bring you in here and we're going to beat you, boy. Right. Peter says, I can only do what I've seen and heard. Yes. Right. Come on. And then he goes on and he elaborates. That would have been enough to, to get him thrown in prison back in those days. He elaborates and he says, we have to do the things of God, yeah. not the commandments of men. Right. Do you realize he just called the high priest nothing more than a mere man? Yeah. 
Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I begin to think about my God. He finally got it. He finally got consumed with this stuff. The Bible then tells us that Peter, the, the Bible says that Peter would walk down through the streets and they would lay folks out that were sick and a shadow was cast upon folks and they were healed. Hallelujah. Why? Because it had nothing to do with who Peter was. He was ordinary. There was nothing, just like there was nothing about the pots that Jesus chose to turn water into wine. They were ordinary. Nobody even gave them a second thought. Everybody passed over the Nobody even listened to them. Hallelujah. Oh, for the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Nobody even paid one any attention to the pots that were standing by the door where everybody washed their hands. But Jesus turned to them and said, Give me something ordinary so I can do something extraordinary with it. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, go on. God, hallelujah, God, hallelujah, God, hallelujah, God, hallelujah. God, Matthew, the 10th God, chapter, God. the 7th verse tonight, the Bible tells us that he tells his disciples, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. Yeah. Come on. Freely you have received. Freely give. I've never understood these ordinary people who charge for an extraordinary gift. They perplex me. Come on. They perplex me to no ends. Amen. Come on. Oh, but you don't know who they are. They're this and they're I don't care who they are. They're an ordinary man. They put on their shoes just like I do. They struggle with the same sins that I do. Come on, hell of a Sunday. You know why? Because they're in the flesh. They're, they're not up on some pedestal that the devil can't touch them. He fights them just like he fights me. Come on, hell of a Sunday. I have the same access to the same power and the authority that they do. Why? Because the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. What he will do for one, he will do for that. I don't care what their name is. I don't care what things they've done. Those are just things that God had done. and nothing to do with who they were. But they get out and they say, Oh, you send me $10 and I will pray the prayer of faith for you. How can you charge for something that you didn't even do in the first place? Come on. Come on. Let, let's go, me and you, brother sales, and you go build a house and I'll charge it for it and I'll get all the money for it. But you're going to be the one building the house. Come on. Amen. Jesus said, I didn't charge you to receive it. Hallelujah. So he said, don't charge to give it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got, to, we got a weird pastor. He won't tell us anything. Hallelujah. He'll tell us he'll pray the prayer for free, for free. There's no money. There's no nothing. Hallelujah. No money, no money. It doesn't matter how much money you carry in this church. It doesn't matter how many times you pay in this church. If you don't understand yeah. this concept, yeah. God takes ordinary people. He has extraordinary things. Come on. Let me, let me give you a news flash tonight. Hallelujah. There will be a church no matter how much money you give. There will be a movement of God no matter how much money you give. God has given you the come on. God has given you the privilege of giving and, and, and where you can bl be blessed in the area of your life. Do not think people. If, if we got this misunderstanding. I'm gonna go ahead and just get off on this for just a moment. We have this misunderstanding that we give to the church because the church light bill needs to be paid. And yes, the church light bill needs to be paid. Don't get me wrong. Mr. John's probably gonna throw a stone at me here in just a minute, but that's all right. Hey, Amen. <laughs> the church light bill does need to be paid. Don't get me wrong. But I've I've lived in a I've lived in a faith society. I have lived in a faith walk where I've seen where we didn't have the money to make the building payment and God will move on people who are in Alaska and who are in other cities and they would send us the money so I can tell you no matter what you give God will always have a church yes. Amen. hallelujah 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 but he has given you another privilege he has allowed another area in your life to lose something to him he's saying I want to bless you but you gotta give it to me Lord here are my finances God Lord here is my praise. Lord, here is my time. I'm going to lose every area I can of my life to you. Lord, if you want me to give, I'll give. Lord, if you want me to shout, I shout, God. But I want you in every aspect of my life. I want you in my finances. I want you in my life. I want you in my health. I want you in my walk. I want you at my work. I want you in every aspect of my life. Hallelujah. So I'm going to have to lose you. Those aspects of my life. Amen. Yes, amen. Mm. Yes, amen. Ordinary. Nothing special. Yeah. There's nothing special. People all the time. I mean, but come on, tell me things like, "Oh, you're you're a wonderful preacher." I sit there and think, if they only knew. Yeah. <laughs> if they only knew how ordinary I am. Yes, Jesus. If they only knew. Come on. 
If it wasn't for the presence of God, if it wasn't for the anointing of God, he could have some you. How foolish I would look and how crazy people say, I don't know how you do it. Things just pop off your head like it has nothing to do with me. In fact, most of the times I get it behind a message, get it behind a pulpit. These are, these are my notes. I have a one, I have a title, and I have some blessed, some scriptures here. That's about it. Everything else just God does. He, he called up somebody that has nothing to do with me. I, but that's the only way I know how to preach. God, when I was 13 years old, God called me to preach. He loved up somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I got up behind a pulpit. I didn't even have any notes. I didn't even have a title of a message. Some of you were there. And I got up and Bill over Thompson was walking. And I stepped forward and I said, I believe God has something for me to say. I didn't even have any notes. And I feel so faithless sometimes because God speaks to me and said, will you get up and preach about that in scripture? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got up that first time I began to preach. I didn't have one scripture. I didn't have one title. I got up and I began to preach. The anointing power of God fell. The spirit of God moved. But it was nothing that I was doing. I just said, God, here I am. Me ordinary. Here's me who's ordinary, God. I'm not doing anything. Lord, I don't know. In fact, I mixed up. I think I mixed up Peter and Paul. I don't remember what I preached about. Hallelujah. But before the service was over, there was a victory march. My dad was standing back there with a smile on his face, just praising God. Amen. Hallelujah. And later on, it happened to us twice. I just feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It happened to us twice. Amen. That he came over to me, had in his text, and exactly everything that I talked about was right in his text. Amen. Come on. Uh, there was another time the exact same thing happened. He had to go pray for somebody. I was up behind a pulpit uh, and the power of God began. It was time for him to preach. He wasn't back. Uh, so I said, all right, God, you're about to do this one. I opened the word of God. I kid you not. I opened the first thing and God said, preach that. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. So I did. See, that's crazy, Pastor. That don't make any sense. It is time for us to be ordinary enough where God can do the extraordinary. Amen. Hallelujah. I opened my Bible, I began to preach, and I preached, and all of a sudden, about halfway through the message, I looked up and seen him in the back door. And I was about to stop. And he goes, <laughs> Amen. Sorry, I kept going. And as we usually did, he got up behind me, and he said, I'm going to read you the text of what God gave me tonight. And I said, Oh Lord, please don't. Please don't do that. Amen. The first scripture that God brought me to was the first scripture he was going to preach on. Amen. Yeah, that's the way God works. We, we just got to make ourselves available. God don't care about your ability. He doesn't care about your, come on. He doesn't care about how great a person you are. He just wants to know, are you available? Amen. Lord, I'm available, God. Here am I, God. Oh, I love that, yeah. Are you available? Are you available tonight to worship God like you never worshipped before? Are you available? Oh, yes. Are you available for oh, yes. a miracle? Are you available for God to move in your life? All oh, does. Are you available? Are you come on? He loves us. Lord, I'll do it, God. Speak the word. Lord. Whatever you want me to do, God, just speak it, God. Lord, if you want me to jump, I'll jump. Some of us don't want to do all those things. Some of us don't want to act crazy. Some of us don't want to get beside ourselves. But I think it's been too long that we have gotten beside ourselves. Oh, yes. We have lost our zeal. We have, our wood is wet. Dare, dare I say that our spiritual wood is wet? And there's no fire lit up under us simply because we have not been available to God in a long time. The Spirit of God's moved. The power of God's moved. Well, maybe, maybe next time, God. Amen. I wonder what would happen if we would walk into the presence of God and say, Lord, I'm available. Oh, yes. Come on. Amen. What would happen? I'll tell you what would happen. The power of God would fall. The presence of God would move. If the saints of God would just thought, Lord, here I am. Yes. I don't know what I'm doing, God. I look foolish, God. With my hands in the air, God. But Lord, I'm available. I'm letting you know, God. I'm here, God. Yes, God. Whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do it. Well, we got to have a form of a service. We got to call the service to order. And we got to have our testimony. And we got to have our prayer request. We got to sing our three songs. We got to sing our special song. We got to hear the preacher preach. And then maybe, just maybe, we might have the presence of God move. But you understand, we could bypass all that if we just said, Lord, I'm available. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Here I am, God. I'm available. Whatever you want me to do today, God, I'm available. Yes. Somebody asked me, how do you know if it's God speaking to you? It usually don't make sense. <laughs> Come on. It didn't make any sense when Jesus said, get out of the boat, Peter. Amen. 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 Preach it. 
Oh my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I told a young man one time, he said, how do you know that the Spirit of God is speaking to you? I looked at him and I said, it's not that God has stopped speaking because God is always moving and He's always speaking because the Bible says seven times that He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I said, what I have to do is I have to shut off everything else. I have to shut off every avenue of my life. I have to shut off my will. I have to shut off what this one said and what that one said. He love Shandria. I've got it down. I figured it out. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't spend much time researching the message and figuring out what God wants me to preach and pulling things off the internet. I spend a lot of my time saying, God, Lord, can you move me out of the way, God? Lord, my ordinary ambitions, God, my ordinary thoughts on how a service should go, God, because I know that my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, your ways, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways, so are your ways higher than my ways, and your thoughts higher than my thoughts, God. My thoughts will be ordinary, God, but what you want to do is extraordinary, God. Lord, let me get to a place where I can hear you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. There's one thing that you need to learn how to do if you want to hear the voice of God is you need to learn how to pray. Yes. 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 Oh, we better go. Wrong. Hallelujah. Jesus. Daniel, the 11th chapter, the 32nd verse tonight. The Bible says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Now, I don't know if you know what this is. Come on. Oh, we better go back and retrace what this is. Amen. I I'll give you time to read it later, but this is the end time prophecy. Amen. Mm. Everybody said the end time prophecy. The end time prophecy. You know when things are supposed to happen, and you know the mark of the beast and all that stuff like that. And come on, Amen. 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 People think we're just supposed to sit in our four walls and wait till the end time comes. No. I don't think I'm gonna last very long, and I already believe that in my heart of hearts. If it's God's will for Him to tarry that long, and I have to go through the end time, I don't think I'm gonna last that long. Because it's going to be the first time somebody comes up and tells me something. And I'm going to, I'm going to pop off to them. I know I am. Because I'm not going to be able to be quiet. Because I know too much. I already do that now. Somebody comes and tells me, well, God, stop moving that away. The first thing I do is say, no, he didn't. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Somebody comes and tells me, well, well, that's just great. That happened back in those days. The first thing I say, well, why doesn't it happen today? Amen. We better go on anyways. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is why I don't understand some churches. I don't understand some people. They think the end time is coming. We're just supposed to sit up and we're just, oh, we're just, we're, oh, we're just so afraid. What we're going to do? What's going, how's going to work? How is this going to happen? How that's going to happen? I can tell you what's going to happen. Hallelujah. And I have scripture for it. The Bible says, such as you wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. But the people that do know their God, oh, yes. oh hallelujah, shall be strong and do exploits. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. If you know your God, oh, for the Holy Ghost, if you know who your God is, he said the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Yes. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That is what I'm trusting in. That's what I'm believing in. If the market crashes tomorrow, if everything falls apart tomorrow, as long as I know my God, the Bible tells me I will be strong and I will be able to do exploits. I may be ordinary. I may not be a president. I may not be a congressman. I may not have credibility. But if I know who my God is, I will be strong. And I will do exploits. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, after the Holy Ghost, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, how is this going to take place? And how is that going to work? And how it doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter. We, we, we complicate ourselves so much with this. And the reason why we can't see miracles in our life and we can't see a movement of God. Can I just preach to you just for a moment? The reason why we cannot see those things is because we're so caught up in how. We have not figured out that we're not going to know how. We just have to walk by faith. Amen. And not by sight. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 If God explained it to you, you wouldn't be able to comprehend it anyway. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I'm ordinary. Come on. The Bible tells us about a woman at the well. The Bible tells us about a woman with an issue of blood. 
doesn't even mention their names because they were ordinary people. There was nothing extraordinary about them. They were just ordinary people. One of them heard that Jesus was coming by and she pressed through the crowd. She gave a part of her life. She had enough faith because Jesus, the Bible says, that the multitude thronged him and he turns around to the disciples and says, Who touched me? A lot of you know this story. And they said, Master, there are many that are around you. And how sayest thou, Who touched me? And he says, Somebody has touched me because I have felt virtue leave my body. Somebody did it right. Somebody figured it out. We don't even know who her name is. Jesus turns to her. The Bible says when the woman sees that she can be hid no longer, Jesus turns to her and says, woman, according to your faith, you are healed. Not even caring about what her name is. We don't even get to what her name is. But there will always be that day. She will always be able to go back and tell her kin folks. One time Jesus was walking down my path. I had spent everything that I had on every doctor in town and I was found none the better but there was one time, there was that one time where all I did was touch the hem of his garment. I did something ordinary. I did something everybody else was doing as well but the Bible said there was something extraordinary that happened. She did nothing out of the ordinary that everybody else was already doing. But she received her healing because all Jesus was looking for. I just need something ordinary. Thank you, Lord. I don't need anything special. I need somebody to open her mouth. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on. The two things that we struggle with so much when we when God's calling us to be a witness. Well, I don't know what to say. It don't matter. Just open your mouth. If you only knew how many messages came out of this mouth because I didn't open my mouth. Come on. If you only knew how many times God was, God took off for the Holy Ghost. You know, my son, I got used to just opening my mouth and God was filling it. That's all there was to it. There was nothing extraordinary about me. I was, I'm ordinary. There's nothing. You know, my son, that's great extraordinary. I just pray. I fast. I read my word. I read the word of God constantly. He called a son, that I pray and I fast. But I have, I have ordinary. I eat just like everybody else. I put my shoes on just like everybody else. I brush my teeth every morning. There are ordinary things in my life. The only thing that's extraordinary is the Spirit of God that dwells within me. Hallelujah. And we got to wrap our minds around that because we constantly think about, we believe that since God has filled us with the Holy Ghost that somehow, someway our ordinary attributes drown out His extraordinary presence. Come on. Because we're constantly saying things like, me God? You want me to do it? Who are you? Have you ever thought about that? How am I going to drown out his extraordinary power? Come on. Can I venture to say that he used donkeys in the Old Testament? Amen. To fulfill his word? Come on. And I know I'm smarter than a donkey. Come on. Amen. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Jesus, he fell on the sun. That donkey wasn't filled with the presence of God. I, I, I have been filled with the presence of God. So why do I constantly, every time God tells me to do something extraordinary, why do we pervert back God? I, me? Yes, you. Nobody else is around. He's talking to you. We do the same thing Moses did. Lord, are you speaking to me, God? I can't talk, God. I, you know, God, I'm wanted in Egypt, God. I stutter. We do the exact same thing Moses does. What we are in sin saying, God, is my ordinary life will drown out your extraordinary presence. You do you understand that's impossible? That's right. That's right. It don't matter how short you may be of extraordinary. It doesn't matter how ordinary you may be. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. He come up on somebody. It doesn't matter if you can't preach your way out of a wet paper sack, my friend. What matters is, or will you be available and say, God, use me? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. The Bible tells us that he used nothing more than a deacon boy to turn a whole city upside down. Yes. Yes. Huh. Because he said, I'm available, God. Yes. Here I am, God. He couldn't preach. Come on. The Bible never says that Philip preached. The Bible says that Philip went into the city and began to lay hands on folks and they began to be healed. 
Hot the Holy Ghost. He can't hold on a machine. Then he began to laugh. He was full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he couldn't preach. He couldn't play an instrument. He couldn't sing. And I've never understood these people who can do have all these great talents. They can preach and they can sing. They can hoop. They can holler. And they just can't figure out the point that it's not about them. It's about this extraordinary God. Amen. He can't hold a machine. That a machine. Philip was nothing more than a deacon boy, and he turned the whole city upside down. The Bible even says that the Holy Ghost wasn't even poured out, but somehow, some way, through the things that Philip did, he had a whole city ready to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost when Peter and John show up. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. He was an ordinary deacon boy. Yes. Let me tell you what that was in the old, in, in back in the early church. He waited on tables. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yes. He made sure drinks were full. Come on. That's what he did. He wasn't Peter. He wasn't Paul. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He was a deacon boy. Yes, amen. Mm. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. We can venture to say they turned the whole city upside down because he was ordinary enough for God to use him. Oh, yes. Mighty God. Mighty God. Oh, Jesus. One more example, and we'll let you go. Everybody talks about Paul and how he wrote half, over half, probably over half of the New Testament. He's a great apostle. Even other denominations would talk about how great apostle Paul was. But do you know he was a murderer? He killed folks. He caused people to blaspheme. Amen. He killed Christian folks. Yes. Remember the story how Stephen stoned to death? Remember Stephen the mortar, how he stoned to death? Guess who's standing there holding the garments? Paul, also known as Saul of Tarsus. He even goes and he gets letters. Come on. From the scribes and the Pharisees that if he finds anybody believing in the name of Jesus, he's going to kill everybody that's left in Damascus. Right. Hallelujah. He had himself an official record that says, if I find anybody that's a Christian, I'm going to put everyone under death. Yep. Amen? Amen? Now, how is God going to use somebody like that? <laughs> right. And I venture to say, has anybody murdered anybody? God used a murderer. And he was one of the greatest apostles that ever strapped on shoe leather. Oh, yes. But he was a murderer. Right. There was nothing extraordinary about Paul. Jesus. In fact, the Bible tells us that Paul would write weighty letters, but when they seen him in physical presence, they would say, Is this him? <laughs> Is this the guy? Right. There was no, he was not big and strong. In fact, many people think he was bald and probably very weak looking. Amen. Amen. Come on. Nothing extraordinary about it. He just allowed God to use an ordinary man to do extraordinary things. Oh, yes. Remember the story of how he's on the road to Damascus and God strikes him down? Because one thing about Saul, who was later turned tamed in the name Paul, when he believed something, he believed it to death. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. He kind of was son that I will shut that In fact, when he's converted on the road to Damascus, the man that God sends to his, oh, to his aid, that his eyes might be opened, he questions him and said, Lord, this is Saul of Tarsus. This is the guy that's been killing us, God. Amen? Amen. Right. This was their enemy. Come on. Isn't it amazing how God would take somebody who the world thinks is the church's enemy and turn him to the greatest ally? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. What a God. Bible says he's walking down to a road to Damascus. The great light strikes him down. He's sitting there and saying, Who art thou, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus, who thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to keep kicking the pricks after the Holy Ghost. And he almost somebody out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And there I venture that Paul went beyond anybody else, but he was nothing more than a murderer and a big yes. mouth. 
he didn't know what he was talking about. He had no idea what he was talking about when he was killing Christians. But Jesus had to strike him down on a road to Damascus. And he said, Paul, I'm going to use something ordinary in your life. And I'm going to do extraordinary things with it. Because now we get the only apostle. We get the only apostle who is a Roman citizen who can have free passage to anywhere he wants to go. He can go to Greece. He can go to come on. He can go to Macedonia. He can go to anywhere he wants to go and preach the gospel. Paul, the one that he begins to offer the Holy Ghost. Now he loves us. That when he first begins to preach, he first begins to move and teach in the synagogue that he confounds many, not because of what he said, but because of who he was. Yes. Yes. Jesus, after the Holy Ghost. In fact, they say, is this the one that was killing the Christians? Is this Saul of Tarsus? And look now, he is talking about the name of Jesus. He confused them, not because about what he was saying, but because of his reputation that he had. Yes. My God, after the Holy Ghost. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. The Bible says his name is changed to Paul. Oh, and Paul does exploits. He plants churches in Corinth. Yes. He plants churches in Rome. Yes. He plants churches in Ephesus. After the Holy Ghost, he cut up Washington. He plants churches in Galatia. Yes. He plants churches all over the world. And he's going, he's preaching the gospel. He's preaching over and over again. In fact, he stands in front of kings. He stands in front of governors. He appeals all the way to Caesar. He cut up Washington. He preaches the gospel. He writes the war. Many of the letters to the early church, the things that we use nowadays. And one of my favorite scriptures is one of the ones that he wrote. And we know that all things work together for the good and the love of God. And of the call according to his purpose. He writes Ephesians from a jailhouse. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thinking about the armor of God. He writes these gospels. He writes these things, many of them, from a jailhouse, my friend. He writes Philippians. He writes these other, other things in the Word of God after the Holy Ghost. He loves somebody to give us instruction. And God just used an ordinary man that said, All right, God, I ain't got nothing else to do. Might as well write a letter. Right. And you're reading it today. Amen. Come on. Amen. Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost. And we wonder why God can't move them in our life. Because we're not available. Do not disturb sound is out on our door. Come back later, Jesus. Not now. Are you available? That's the question. Are you available? 